Hey friends, Jake from Rain City Wargaming here. A couple weeks ago, I made my way down to San Diego for FLG's SoCal Open 2023, um, and I wanted to share a bit about how that went. Right, I have arrived in San Diego. We're gonna see if the sisters made it. Did anyone collapse or break? Did I, I'm gonna do any surgery? Alrighty, looking pretty good. Everyone looks all right. Morvin scooched a little, but uh, everyone's looking safe and sound. Uh, it's early, I mean, it's not that early. It's like eight something, but it feels early. And before we head off, um, I'm gonna see if I can't find a breakfast burrito. Alrighty, we've made it. The beach is like right there. Del Mar Fairgrounds are right here. The breakfast burrito is present. Um, I'm gonna eat this off camera. Um, and then maybe we can chat about my list and stuff. So here's the thing about Seattle. Um, Seattle's Mexican food is terrible. I mean, I grew up here in San Diego where you can go to literally any corner chakra shop and it's gonna be some of the best Mexican food you've ever had. And um, I miss it, I miss it a lot. This breakfast burrito was so good. Let's go over my list first and we can talk about a couple of the games. Um, so right at the center, we've got Morven Vol um, and two units of Paragon War Suits, right? So she'll partner up with one and the other can balance the other side of the board um, to give me some pressure on both sides. I also brought the Triumph of St. Catherine um, and a Dialogus for this special little combo there. Um, the Dialogus can turn your Miracle Dice into sixes and the Triumph can let you use as many Miracle Dice as you like, um, and that, when you have a few Miracle Dice stocked up, can be a pretty devastating combo. The target of that combo was the Retributors, usually, because they had a good set of Multi-Meltas, um, and they were riding inside of an Immolator. The Immolator also has a nice combo where, when you get out of it, you can target something with the Flamers, and then the unit that disembarked gets to reroll their wounds against that, that same target. Finishing up my characters, I also brought a Cannoness and a Palatine, uh, each leading five Sacrosynths with Halberds. They did take a point of strength off the Halberds in 10th edition, and I found that they weren't, they didn't quite have the same punch that they used to. Uh, to fill out my numbers, I brought uh, two units of 10 Battle Sisters, one to accompany the Triumph in the back line, and really just extra wounds for the Triumph, um, and another in a Rhino. The idea being I can get that Rhino up to the point, get the sisters onto the point, and get that extra miracle dice that they get for holding it at the start of my command phase. In Deep Strike, I had a group of 10 Zephyrim and two units of five Seraphim. This way I can drop them in for investigate signals in the corners, for behind enemy lines, deploy teleport homers, all those sorts of positional secondary objectives have some flexibility, be able to put them where I need. Additionally, I had a second group of retributors, just, you know, stick them wherever they need to be, go shoot some things, and a castigator battle tank. My exorcist uh, at the time that I went to the Soak Open was still not painted, which was a bummer because that indirect fire can be really nice, but the castigator has that big battle cannon, a little bit of anti-tank threat, because otherwise, you know, anti-tank really is a weakness for the Sisters of Battle. Notably missing in my list that you'll see in a lot of other competitive sisters lists now, especially after the sisters won the Tampa Open, and a lot of folks have been taking a look at that list. I don't have Celestine. I literally don't own the model, so I couldn't bring it. Um, I have ordered it now. It's coming soon. I also don't own the Junith model, and that one's sold out everywhere these days, so it'll be a little while before I can pick that one up. So going into game one, uh, my opponent was Antonius and his World Eaters. Um, Antonius was a fantastic opponent, really fun guy to play against. For deployment, um, as expected, Antonius deployed right up on the line. Those world eaters, they really want to get that turn one charge. They want to use their advance and charge. Uh, they want to get a good blood Yahtzee roll and just tackle you in your deployment zone. I ended up going first and I had I deployed cautiously, but now I actually kind of had to walk up the board. And so I moved forward carefully. I, I set up, uh, I moved my rhino up onto the point, hoping that shell would give me a chance to, you know, maybe they take out the rhino, but the sisters are able to spill out onto the point. Otherwise tried to move where his world eaters weren't, where they weren't likely to be able to get that turn one charge off. Unfortunately for me, the world eaters were able to get that great blood Yahtzee roll, get the advance in charge, um, and they connected with my tanks, including the Castigator, fairly early on, um, and eventually just sort of wrapped around that left flank. Angron came around there as well, um, and they just rolled through the layers of my army there, just eating up my back line. Try as we might, we weren't quite able to take down Angron, 
Um, and that really was the game. It was uh, ended at 55 to 100. World Eater's very strong, right? Like just this melee threat that can wrap around um, and chew through my units. You gotta be really careful about your positioning. It's a lesson that I learned here and I'm gonna try and apply the next time I play them. My second game was against Aldair and his Necrons. When I got to the table, I was excited. I had the home field advantage. We had sisters to reign. Surely this was a good sign. Surely this was a good sign. Uh, Necrons, as always, the key is can you deal with the big warrior blobs, or in this case, uh, with the Lich Guard blob as well. And uh, I wasn't quite able to do it. Nothing in my list really has that punch and that burst to take down a big blob of warriors or Lich Guard in one go. Um, with the out of phase regeneration, with the reanimator, you really gotta take them down all at once and I wasn't quite able to do that this game. And so to an extent I didn't try. I mostly ignored the warrior blob on my right flank, but uh, my paragons and Morvan Vol ended up needing to engage with the Lich Guard uh, just to keep them off of some of the other points. They got tied up. The Paragons got taken out. Morvan actually lasted a long time. She held on with one wound for quite a while. And then I was able to use Divine Intervention, uh, that one CP stratagem and discard some Miracle Dice to bring her back with one wound. And she was actually able to take out Zerus um, before she finally succumbed to lots and lots of Necron guns. Meanwhile, on the right flank, I was gonna try and use the Rhino, like I said, to get up to that point and get the sisters there. It survived the Necron shooting on one wound, but then when I was ready to move it up to the point, he used Overwatch, picked off that last wound, the sisters spilled out and had to slog it out on foot and just couldn't quite reach that objective, which was really unfortunate. Uh, the Necrons also tried to deep strike into the corner with some destroyers and one of the Glocktopi? The Glocktopus? I was able to hold that point, move some units around, clear that out, and really hold that left flank confidently. Additionally, my Seraphim and my Zephyrim dropped down into the back corners for some secondaries, and the Zephyrim were just about ready to wrap around to that home objective, um, but unfortunately we were getting really close to time and only at the bottom of round three. So we weren't able to talk it out, really too close and too much to talk through, and we ended with a seven point deficit, 65, 58, I was just behind, uh, and Aldair took that one. Um, for what was a really fun, really close game. Game three was versus Michael's Grey Knights, and uh, immediately I was like, oh no. Well, good for Michael, right? You have these Storm Bolters on every unit that against most targets, you just never really get to shoot them, and so you don't bother. And so, you know, I could see the excitement light up in his face. Ooh, T3 bodies to shoot my Storm Bolters at. Not exactly what you wanna see as an inf T3 infantry heavy list. Um, but again, really fun game, really great opponent. So for our deployment, again, I deployed my castle around my home objective, and the Grey Knights really didn't have much on the board. With First of the Fray, he actually picks a few of them back up into Deep Strike, so there's really not a lot on the board to start. The Grey Knights went first, sort of tried to come forward and hold down a few objectives. I was able to step up on my turn and clear at least one of the Dread Knights. After that, some Purifiers dropped into my back line, and that was real bad news. They did a lot of damage to my units on my home objective, they cleared the Retributors on Overwatch, so I wasn't able to do that combo with the Immolator. Additionally, some Paladins dropped in, took out my midline, <laughs> really bad news for the Sisters. We just couldn't get out of the deployment and onto those center points. I also tried to tag his backline with the Seraphim and the Zephyrim, just drop back there, try and, you know, bring the pressure back to his deployment zone. But those two up saves on the strikes are really strong, um, and we just couldn't cut through them. Uh, Additionally, some Paladins deep struck in for a counter punch and uh, cleared those units as well. This game was also a close one, but not so close. We ended 65-85 for the Grey Knights. Alrighty, so we're here at the end of the day. Whew, and I went 0-3. The games were all good. I, I had a great time. Really nice opponents, all three. Fresh thoughts are, as, as usual always with sisters, like T3 bodies just hurts. You just have so many models and they're just dying, dying, dying. It is nice that you get the consolation of the Miracle Dice. It seems like it's trying to be like a Mario Kart style, like catch-up mechanic, um, but it feels like it falls short. We're missing a lot of anti-tank. Like this is known, we know this about the sisters. Yeah, I had a good time. It was a lot of fun. Um, I need to decide. I've been deep striking both units of Seraphim and the Zephyrim, and I decided actually maybe I want to start them on the board so they get more out of their 12-inch movement. Because right now they like deep strike somewhere and then die. 
And uh, I wonder if, like, instead playing them like KG, jumping them building to building with their 12-inch movement, might actually be a smarter play most of the time. At least maybe for the Zephyrim. Yeah, but that's that's my uh, that's my thoughts for the night. I did end up dropping the second day, so I only played three games on the first day. Uh, I had some family stuff uh, in the afternoon and the second day, and one game in the morning wasn't going to be worth it. Of course, no one wants to go 0-3, but I still had a great time. I had really wonderful opponents and some really fun games. These were my first competitive games with Sisters in 10th edition, so really learned a lot, lots to apply to future games. I've even learned some things that I'm gonna apply to my list coming up for the Grand Narrative. Um, not bringing any named characters in that list, but just some of the techniques, how I wanna handle the Battle Sisters and the Paragon War suits. Overall, had a really wonderful weekend. As always, the SoCal Open is a great event, a great location. Beautiful sunny skies right on the beach there in Del Mar. Just a really good time. And I'm looking forward to our next couple of events. We've got the Grand Narrative coming up in Atlanta. Stay tuned, get subscribed so you can get notifications when we upload the videos for that event. I'm also gonna be going to the Las Vegas Open in January and we'll be bringing our cameras and recording some video there as well. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Um, and with that, we'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye now.